This is Coding Math, Episode 56, Box Layout. A fairly common user interface programming task is to lay out multiple items in some formal arrangement. If you know in advance how many items you have and what size they are, and the size of the area you have to lay them out in, you can hard code their positions and be done with it. But what if you need to do it dynamically? Say you don't know the size of the space or number or sizes of the objects in advance then you need to rely on some kind of algorithm to do that layout for you. Today we'll discuss the box layout algorithm, with some variations. Of course, most UI frameworks and libraries such as HTML, Android, iOS, etc. have built-in layout managers to do this kind of stuff for you, often with many more complex features than we'll be getting into here today. But it's good to know the principles behind these things, so we'll use a canvas to do everything manually. Now in a box layout, you position one item, then you put the next item beside that one, and the next one beside that, and so on. The way I've shown it here, I'm laying the items out horizontally. So this is a horizontal box, or H-box layout. Alternately, you can have a V-box, or a vertical box layout, in which you lay out the items top to bottom. And of course, you can have left to right H-boxes, and bottom to top V-boxes. There are also all kinds of other options you can specify, such as the spacing between the items, how items are aligned, and what to do when you run out of room. So let's jump in here and get coding. I've got a canvas on stage here, 600 by 600, and I'm going to fill it with gray just so we can see it. Then I'll set the fill color to black so that we can see the items that we're drawing. So we'll need some items to draw. We could pull in some images or something, but I'll keep it simple and we'll just make some random rectangles. I'll create an items array and loop through 10 times. In each iteration, I'll push an object that has a random width and height anywhere from 20 to 100 pixels on each axis. Okay, we have our items. Now it's time to lay them out. Let's do this in a function called hbox. hbox will take a single parameter to start the items array. Now the function itself. It'll start really simple. I'll create an x and y and set them both to zero. Then I'll loop through each of the items in the array, getting a reference to each item. And I'll say context, fill rect, x, y, item w, item h. This draws the rectangle at the current x, y, with the width and height defined by the item itself. Then I'll add item.w to x, so the next item will be drawn just to the right of the last one. Simple enough. Let's try it. Well, sure enough, we have a bunch of rectangles laid out here, but they're all kind of stuck together. This wouldn't look quite as bad if the items were images or shapes of different colors, rather than being all black. But in any case, some spacing might make things look a bit better. I'll add a second parameter, spacing, to the function. And I'll set x and y to spacing rather than zero. This will give it some nice padding on the container itself. Then when I add item.w to the current x, I'll also add spacing. Then I'll call a function with a spacing argument of 10 and try that. Much better. Now we can change the spacing, making it smaller or bigger. And the layout continues to look pretty nice. You might notice that with larger spacing, some of the items go beyond the right edge of the canvas. We'll deal with that shortly. But next, let's look at alignment. Currently, all the items are top aligned. That might be fine, but it's always good to have options. We might want them to be center aligned or bottom aligned. For those other two options, we'll need to know what the bottom or center is. Note, I'm not talking about aligning it to the center or bottom of the canvas, just aligning all the items to each other. So we'll need to know what the tallest item is. I'll create a variable called max height and set it to zero. Then I'll loop through all the items and set max height to the maximum of max height and that item's height. At the end of that loop, max height will be equal to the tallest item. Then I'll add a new parameter, alignment. Let's consider that the current alignment value is top, and that will be the default. We'll handle the center and bottom alignments as separate cases. I'll create a ypos variable that will contain the offset from the initial y value. That will default to zero for top alignment. When we draw the item, instead of using y, we use y plus y pause. So for top alignment, since y pause is zero, there's no difference from what we're already doing. Nothing has changed and we're still getting top alignment right now. Now let's draw this all out to be clear where we're going with it. 
we have our initial y value here. For top alignment, we add a y pos of 0 to that, so all items get drawn starting from that initial y. For bottom alignment, we add max height, which puts us down here. Then we subtract item.h, which puts us back up here. This puts the bottom of the item at y plus max height. For items of different sizes, their starting y will be different, but their bottom will always rest in the same position. Jumping back in the code, we'll check if alignment is bottom. If so, we set y pos to max height minus item.h. Then we'll call the hbox method with bottom as the third parameter. And cool, we have all of our items bottom aligned. Now let's deal with center alignment. Back to the drawing board. First, we need to find the absolute center point. This is y plus max height divided by 2. To find the top position of the item, we subtract half of the item height. This puts our item here. For different sized items, they will get moved up more or less, so remain aligned on that center point. Back in the code, we add an else statement for alignment equals center, and set y pos to max height minus item height divided by 2. That's what we just saw with a bit of algebra to avoid dividing by 2 twice. Now we call the hbox function passing in center, and yes, our items are center aligned. Neat. Of course, we can go back to top, or really anything other than center or bottom, and we have our top alignment. Okay, earlier I mentioned that the items sometimes went off the right side of the canvas. Let's make some more items to exacerbate that problem. I'll bump it up to 35. Now we're only seeing a fraction of those 35 items. The rest are off the canvas. There are various options here. You could just stop drawing when x is beyond the canvas width. That wouldn't make any more items visible, but it would at least not waste time drawing items that couldn't be seen. Or you could enlarge the canvas to make it big enough to hold all the items. In that case, you might want to loop through the list first to get the overall width of all the items plus the spaces and set the canvas to be big enough to hold them all. I'll leave that one to try out for yourself. The one I want to demonstrate here is wrapping. We'll check if there's space to draw the next item on the canvas. If so, we'll draw it. If not, we'll set x back to the starting position, which is equal to spacing. And we'll increment y by max height plus spacing. This will start a new row. In the code, let's make this optional by supplying a fourth parameter, wrap. Then, after we get each item, we check if x plus the item width plus spacing is greater than the width of the canvas. If not, then we have enough space to draw the next item. The spacing in the equation is optional, but it will ensure that you still have a margin on the right edge. Now if this calculation evaluates to true, then we're out of bounds. We need to create a new row. This is easy enough. We just set x back to spacing, and increment y by max height plus spacing. Let's call this with the fourth parameter true to make it wrap. Now we can see all of our items, at least until we run out of height. We can adjust the spacing and the alignment, and everything still works. So that's our HBox layout. Pretty simple implementation, but still it has some useful options. For homework, try making a VBox layout function. You can pretty much copy and paste what we have and then swap all the X's and Y's and widths and heights. Or try a left to right HBox. There are lots of other options you could add into this simple algorithm as well. Make it as simple or complex as you need it.